class. I'm here to continue to talk about uh, chapter four. Uh, we already talked about PDF. I have uploaded a video about combinational or combinatorial uh, formula and also factorial. So please take a look at that. And now we are going to keep going and, and jump into the actual distributions. As this is an eight weeks uh, term, I don't find it realistic to uh, expect that you understand every formula and wording for chapter four. So instead of going through all this, I found the best thing to do was to summarize it for you in an Excel file where I also have put some Excel formulas and you're gonna see how your life is gonna be much easier. So right here, I have defined hyper, they are all discrete probability distributions. The hypergeometric, the key word you want to remember is without replacement, which means if you have uh, five cards, you have uh, five poker hand cards, okay, and you're testing for hypergeometric and you choose one card, now you have four cards, correct? So you don't, that means you don't put it back. So when you do the second uh, uh, trial, now you have four cards, you choose one card. Now you have three cards, okay? And so far and so on. So without replacement means you don't put it back on your, on the, on your hand and have five again. It's gonna change. It's dependent on what you do here, okay? so. If we're doing a binomial distribution, which is looking for the number of success that you're testing, which I forgot to say that, um, you're gonna have five cards and then you're gonna choose one card, but you're gonna replace, you're gonna put back in your hand. So when you do a new try, you're gonna have again, five cards and you choose a card. So that's what they mean by without replacement and with replacement. The geometric distribution uh, is nothing more than what we call a negative binomial, which means by that, okay, for the binomial, you're looking for the number of success first. On the geometric, you're looking for the number of failures. For example, if I tell you that I'm looking uh, for a car and uh, I want to know uh, at most three uh, dealerships I call so I'm counting that I'm gonna fail uh, the first two times before I can get a success that they will have a car so it's gonna be Test is failure, test is failure, test is failure, test is failure. When I finally find the number I'm looking for, the success, then I stop testing, okay? And in geometric, it can go an infinite number. Um, so we're looking for the number of failures before we can reach any success. And the last is gonna be the Poisson distribution, which is the probability of a given number of events occurring in a fixed interval, in a time. For example, I'm looking for uh, this event is gonna occur in a 15 minutes uh, period of time, which none of this is gonna make any sense until we test it. Let's go back to your book. Remember that uh, if you have looked at the other videos and I show you how to do um, the combinational or combinatorial with the factorial and then they start with the hypergeometric which I did go over so let's now try to do all this here all those calculations just by using Excel so right here which I have already pasted here it says you're putting all together and now we can compute the probability of getting exactly two aces in a five car poker hand, which I put it right here. Okay, so we have then to think that, um, what is my uh, X right here? Let's fo uh, follow this. What is my X? My X is two, right? We're looking for exactly two cards. Okay, what is my N? Well, my sample size, it's gonna be five because we have a hand uh, a five uh, a five poker hand, okay? So, and right here, what is my K? Well, the number of success, 
right here, it's going to be four because you have a diamond and then you have a hearts and then you have spades and then you have, um, uh, I forgot the last one, diamond, heart, spades, and clubs, correct? Okay, so that's four. And lastly, how many cards is on a deck of cards? 52. Okay, so let's now put it all this in a formula right here. And I have also put the two variations. On the zero means or false in the end, the last digit right here, it means you're calculating uh, something without, uh, it's not a cumulative, okay? And this is cumulative, which means in some problems, we're gonna be like at most three. So you wanna know zero, one, two, three. So that's what is called cumulative. But if you're doing exactly three, that's non-cumulative. So in this case, the first one, zeros, always gonna be non-cumulatives and one is always gonna be cumulatives, okay? So let's try the, the formula over here. I'm just following it right here, this one. So remember, hype, and then right here, it pops for you when you put the equals and you start typing. So you're trying to get two aces in a five card poker hand and you know we have four types of aces in 52 cards okay so your sample is two right you're trying to get two in a five poker hand and then you have four for that specific uh aces and 52 cards total and is it false i don't want it to be a cumulative distribution and then we enter and then here it's your probability so there is about a 40 uh four percent not 40 i'm sorry or 3.9 let me see if we are correct open your book here you go so all this in one simple formula so as long as you are able to determine uh which one is your number of interests which one is your sample size which one is uh the total number interest that you have of the same thing and which one is the total population size you can do that easily so again all i did i just put in here two that i wanted two cards in a poker hand i know there's uh four types of aces in a deck of cards okay and we will be done with that one so let's now go to a binomial distribution which again you're doing probability to act success in any trials uh, with P being the number of success. So let's try an actual uh, problem. Um, let me go, sorry about that. Let me go to uh, right here, definitions. The problems start somewhere over here. Okay, let's try the first one. Uh, I don't want to copy and paste over there. So let's just see if I can kind of put it like this okay remember i'm trying to cover the whole chapter four it's not going to be a small video but it's not going to be as bad as you think okay so according make it a little smaller over here uh, okay so according to a recent article the average number of babies born with significant hearing loss deafness is approximately two for 1,000 babies. So it's giving you a ratio over here, right? So two in 1,000 is what? It's 0 0.002, okay? In a healthy baby nursery. The number climbs to an average of 30 uh, babies in a intensive care nursery. If you would do the ratio as well, you do 30 divided by 1,000, that's 0 0.03. So suppose that 1,000 babies health, health, from healthy baby nurseries were randomly surveyed, so that's, you have 1,000, right? So that's your N, which is 1,000, correct? I don't know why it's, uh, let me format as a number, general, hopefully. Okay, here you go. And then uh, find the probability that exactly two babies were born deaf. Okay, so my X over here is two babies, two. Here you go. So I should have everything that I need. This is my probability. Let me move over here. 
this is my p okay okay so now that we have everything let me move it uh, over here you you got to follow on your book i'll show you the questions again okay so here you go um suppose that thousand baby find exactly two babies so let's go ahead and let's do exactly two babies non-cumulative so we're gonna have two okay right here it's my i'm just following the this formula right here binomial distribution so the number of my sample i want is two the number of tri trials is a thousand trials and my prob probability is going to be 0 0.002 and i do not want it to be cumulative so here you go that's the answer right here so i would say about it depends how many uh decimals you put it there so it's about 0 0.2709 so on 53 so we did 52 right here right probably exactly two babies were born that okay so if you want to go ahead and uh, another example let's just keep going use the following information to answer the next four exercises recently a nurse comment that when a patient calls the medical advice line claiming to have the flu the chance that he or she truly has the flu and not just a nasty cold is only about 4% of the next 25 patients calling claiming to have the flu. We're interested in you know, how many actually have the flu. Well, we already got quite a few uh, information over here. So let's just go ahead and put, it says we have 4%, correct? I'm just trying to put everything in one screen for you and that's not helping me. I know this is a little small, but please follow on your book then. So it's saying that the probability it's 4% is already giving to us, right? In 25 patients, right? Well, if we want to uh, know the actual, um, average we were gonna do 25 times 0.4 that's gonna be one patient okay so let's go back here to the problem define the random variable and list its possible values well the random variable so if we're trying to define it's gonna be define the random variable and its possible values so my random variable is gonna be the number a patient's calling in claiming to have the flu uh, in who actually have the flu and it can take any value between 0 and 25 because 25 patients okay so my distribution well we we have a binomial distribution okay and that's how you're gonna state it you're gonna have a binomial distribution X it's a binomial distribution where 25 patients and only 4% actually have the flu. Now, find the probability that at least 4 of the 25 actually have the flu. At least 4. So, it's not exactly 4. And it's not at most. So, to do that, what you can do is let's calculate the binomial distribution okay so let's say that there's none in uh, 25 and my probability is uh, 0 4 false okay then you could just go ahead so and do 1 and now right here you're gonna do 2 and now right here you're gonna do three okay so if you sum all that at least four so equals to four okay so if you sum all that and now you're gonna do one minus as 
this value. Um, find the probability, so I make it bigger here, so find the probability that at least four of the patients actually have the flu. So at least four, so you want to count one, two, three, four, correct? So why don't we go ahead and do right here, use at most, so we're going to do one minus the most, which is four, correct? So minus one minus the binomial distribution of four in 25 when a probability is 0 0.4 and we're gonna do a cumulative So let me make the, so 55, find the probability that at least four of the patients, uh, 25 patients actually had the flu. So the probability of at least, well, if this is at most, so at least it's going to include one, zero, one, two, and three. So the easiest way we can do is do one minus the binomial distribution of three and then in 25 where my probability is 0.4 and I want a cumulative so I want a 0, 1, 2, 3 so at least 4 is going to be 1 minus that which is going to be six, about 16% 16, 17% if you round it up and then the last question is going to be on average for every 25 patients calling in, how many uh, do we expect to have the flu? Well, on average, it says you have a 4% in 25. So I actually already solved that earlier, which is 1, because you have 25 times 4. That's going to be 1 or you could do equals one divided by my probability uh, one uh, divided by 0 0.04 25 okay let's see how long is this video which I already answer uh, here And now for the last one, um, where's the last one? On average for every 25 call in, how many do you expect to have flu, uh, to actually have the flu, et cetera, here of the 25 claiming only about 4% uh, 4 actually have it. So you're going to do, which I already did it before, it's going to be 25 times 4%, it's one patient. And you would be done with problems uh, 52 all the way to 56. It's, it, it sounded long, but it's because I'm explaining. Because really, if you had already uh, all the formulas, you would be able to solve it fast. Geometric. That's the one that can get a little more complicated, but it's not as bad as it sounds. So the ge geometric, remember, we're trying to get a failure, a failure, failure, failure. Can go infinite until we actually find a uh, success. Why don't we go straight to a problem? And I'll try to explain to you. One thing you have to remember um, for the geometric, it's right here. Uh, probability of having X failures prior to the Rth success in independent trials with P success equals P. And actually, uh, is missing something here. Uh, your success is always also going to be R is always going to be 1. So I said R, it's going to be 1. So let's move this up here. Okay, so let's try a problem. It makes more sense. 
A consumer looking to buy a used red Miata car will call dealerships until she finds a dealership that carries the car. She estimates the probability that any independent, it's another uh, dealership, will have the car uh, will be 28%. We're interested in the number of dealerships she must call. So you see that they're not sure, so she's gonna have to call so many to finally get a success. So it's probably gonna be like a failure, failure, she's gonna call, 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 call. Failure, failure for your success, she finds one. And then again, so that would be what is the geometric. Uh, let's go ahead and use the formula. Right here, it's gonna be this, which is the negative distribution. Let's actually move over here. So we're gonna do X, right? Is going to be the number of failures. Uh, so let's try to answer some in order words. Uh, define the random variable X. Well, the random variable X that you're trying to determine is the number of dealers she must call until she finds <coughs> let's go back to the problem in other words define the random variable x so the random variable x is the number of dealerships that she must call to buy a used red miata car okay so b is the values that X may take on, well, X can take on any value from <coughs> So let's go to, to a problem right here. A consumer looking to buy a used Redmi at a car will call dealership until she finds a dealership that carries the car. So we're assuming failure until she has a success and then she will stop. So she estimates the probability that any independent dealership will have the car will be 28%. We're interested in the number of dealerships she must call. In words, define the random variable X. Well, the random variable X is the number of dealerships she must call. I'm trying to highlight here. Um, so the number of dealerships she must call until she finds one with a used red Miata car, okay? So list the values uh, it may take on, the X may take on. X take, can, may take on values one, two, three, four, until infinite. You can take any value. Uh, the distribution right here, the way you're gonna, uh, let's put these questions uh, over here. Okay, so my distribution, it's going to be, it's going to be a geometric, right? And we're talking about a 0.28% probability. And that's, that would be your distribution. So here go the problems. On average, how many dealerships would uh, we expect her to have to call until she finds one that has the car. So on average, that's another formula that you're not presented. So to calculate the average, you're going to do one divided by your probability. So we're going to do one divided by 0 0.28. So on average, she's going to have to call um, about 3.6 dealerships or four dealerships until she actually finds the car. And now find the probability that she must call at most four dealerships. See, this one is already telling us right here. It says to use the, this formula if you're looking for the most. Let's put it on here. So you're going to see what the formula is much easier. So the number you have it over here is four dealerships right and most four they are it's gonna be uh the number of success which is always one okay 
my P is going to be 0 0.28, right? And then we're going to do one for cumulative. So we're going to have uh, at most four. At most four. Find the probability that she must call at most four dealerships. At most, no more than four. So we don't include four, and we use the formula where we have the one right here. At most, use this formula. Okay, so let's actually copy this formula over here. So let's go ahead and do, okay, my X is going to be at most, so we're not going to include 4. Uh, and then my R, which is gonna, the second one right here, is always going to be 1 for my success. My probability is going to be 0.28, and then we, have, we want a uh, cumulative at most. So it's going to be the answer. It's about uh, 73%. So the probability that she must call at least at most four is 73%. And lastly, find the probability that she must call three or four. So you are actually um, doing for three. I go here and then adding four. So let's go over here and let's do twice. Okay, so for three, right? And then it's all going to be one for my success, probability 28. And let's just leave it zero. And right here, we're going to have 4, 1, 0 0.28, and uh, 0. So if you go ahead and you add those two, So now find the probability that she must call three or four. Well, you have determined right here that M most four is 73. So really all you have to do is one minus this value to get about, no, it's not. Uh, she must call three or four. So three. three or four, right? So we're gonna do, let's copy this one right here. So four, um, and this is gonna be false. Find the probability that she must call three or four. So exactly three is the negative distribution. So three, one, zero point twenty-eight, and then uh, false, and then for four.
date. Three or four. Three or four. Now I got me find the probability that she must call three or four. So I'm assuming three, true, and then four, eighty one, nope.
in the last one. Now find the probability that she must call three or four. So read this as find the probability that she must call three or four to succeed. So what does that mean? That we have to test two because it's going to be failure, failure, success is the third one, right? So we have failure, we have failure, and then on the third one, she's going to succeed, correct? And then we're going to test it for three because we are expecting failure, we're expecting failure, failure, and on the fourth one, she's going to succeed. So the probability that she's going to, there we go, negative binomial distribution. So we expect two, and R is always one. My probability is 28%. We don't want a cumulative, okay? Plus my distribution now of three failures, and then the success always one. 0.28 and then we are going to do false as well so the sum of this two should be 2497 what i'm trying to figure if is i do the distribution of three in a cumulative it's gonna one minus no which is 24.97%, uh, about 25%. And you would be done uh, with problem 74. So see in one Excel, we have, I have not assigned anything for the hypergeometric. Uh, I'm assigning this uh, 52 uh, to 56. Then right here, uh, we have problem 74. And lastly, it's going to be our Poisson distribution. The Poisson distribution involves um, trying to determine a given event, uh, trying to determine the success of a given event in a period of time. So let's just pick an example in your book. Um, I don't know, uh, 82. There we go. Poisson is the first one. And let me copy this to see if it makes it easier. Okay, let me go over here. I'm going to put it down here. Okay, first, the switchboard in a Minneapolis law office gets an average, an average of 5.5 uh, incoming phone calls. So there is uh, 5 point is an average uh, during the noon hour on Mondays, okay? Experience shows that the existing staff can handle up to six, up to six. So they can handle up to six calls um, at noon on Mondays. Perfect. Okay. So let's X B equals the number of calls received at noon. So to find the mean and standard deviation, I'm just going to show you how you do that. Well, you already have the mean, correct? Here you go. That's your mean right here. It's 5.5. To find your standard deviation, you're just going to do the square root of your mean over here. So it's going to be about approximately 2.3452. Okay. So that's how much it deviates, that how much it changes. So let's suppose that I would ask you how much is one standard deviation above the mean. You would sum this value plus this value. It would be 7.84. And if I would ask you uh, one standard deviation below the mean, so you subtract. So you would have 3.15. About to 7.8485 but i'm not gonna ask you that as far as the on this chapters this we're gonna start on uh chapter six uh, on the normal distribution you're gonna be looking at the intervals okay so now uh what is the probability that the office receives at most six calls and noon at most right here probability at most okay so let's go ahead and use this Poisson uh, distribution uh what is my x well receive at most six right 
what is my mean? This is it. And then uh, we do not want a uh, cumulative. And then at most, we need to use one or through At most, we need to use one, which is the same at true right here. And then that's going to be, let me put it over here, 68.60. There we go. So let me move the average over here, which is one of your answers, and your standard deviation over here, which is another answer. Okay, so find the probability that the law office receives six calls, exactly six, and no, and what does it mean to the law office staff who get on average 5.5 uh, 5 income and no. So right here, exactly, so let's use this formula over here. So we're going to do this over here. So we're going to use this formula over here. So let's do the Poisson distribution of, so it's asking for six calls and no, right? My mean is this one right here, but I don't want a cumulatives, which is zero or false. So it's going to be 15.71, or should I say about 15.7? What does it mean? Uh, it means that, um, there is uh, a 15.7 uh, or 16% probability that the office staff will receive uh, more calls than they can handle, right? Because they can handle 5.5 and there is a probability that they, it's going to increase in 16%. So it's 16% more than we can they can handle, okay? And then lastly, what is the probability that the office receives more than eight calls at noon? The easiest way to think of that, more than eight, instead of, I mean, you're going to have to calculate eight to infinite. So what about we do one minus the at most, right? So we're doing one minus at most. So let's go ahead and use this formula right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do, uh, we want to do at most 8. So don't include 8, right? My average is 5.5. .5. And at most, you need to put true a 1. So the probability that they're going to do, um, include 8, I guess. At most, so one minus at most. So let's go ahead and use this formula over here. And then we're going to do a little twitch, which is equals to one minus. Okay, I'm using now the formula for at most. My x, I'm asking for at most eight. My mean is 5.5. And it has to be cumulative because at most I'm including zero all the way to eight, which is true or one. So the probability that, here we go, the office receives more than eight calls at noon, it's about 10.5% um, or 10 points, uh, or 11% or uh, whichever you think it's better. And uh, we would be done with problem, uh, with chapter four. Like I said, I don't expect for you to remember every formula and this excel formula actually helps you believe it or not so um, better than you having to go through every problem in the book and we're going to be jumping then into chapter five
which I have already uploaded the videos. So what you expected to do for chapter four problems? Uh, I don't expect any hypergeometric. I have solved uh, problems 52 to 56. So let's do 52, 54, 56. I have problem 70. I have solved probably uh, 74 for the geometric, and I also have solved problem 82 for the question. So you have only one, two, three, four, five problems total uh, for chapter four. Okay. I hope this video helps. Again, um, if anything, on your midterm, as far as these distributions, I would only probably be asking you about um, definitions such as uh, when you say without replacement, what does that mean with replacement? When you're looking for failure first and then success, so things to that extent. Um, and I hope this helps. Thank you.